First question is from Hope is Life 50. What do you personally like to do to re-energize your training when you feel in a bit of a rut with your routine? I don't think Sal can answer this. Have you missed a what workout? Does that mean? Have you missed a workout in <laughs> eight years? <laughs> I don't think you're qualified. Impossible. I don't no, think I you're do, qualified I do th- to answer this. I do things all the time to re-energize my, huh? my training. Oh yeah. I, I I mean it's probably the same thing you guys do. I change my goal. I yeah. change my focus. Mm-hmm. That's gotta be the most effective um way that I found uh for myself and even for my clients that would kind of get them re-energized. So you know, one one block it may be to um, let's see how much I can train like a bodybuilder and focus on feeling the muscle and getting the pump and sculpting my body. And then, you know, I'm going to train now more like a power lifter or, you know, I'm going to work on the depth of my squat or I'm going to work on my ability to lift something overhead with one arm or work on mobility or something like that. And I'll do it for a block of training. And the reason why it's so energizing is when you do it that way, you, you see progress. And progress is, is fun. It's, it's, it's not fun when you don't see progress. But when you change your workout and you change some of your goals, like if you always train like a bodybuilder and then you decide you're going to train more functional, mm-hmm. for at least three months, you're going to see rapid gains in your functional performance or vice versa, right? You train functional and you train like a bodybuilder. So I, I would say that has to be one of the easiest like buttons to push when you're feeling kind of like you're in a rut. Yeah, I like to learn a new skill. I like to seek out some kind of new method or, um, and this takes a, a little bit of research, but to, to find a concept or a different exercise that I haven't really adopted and see how that would fit within uh, programming and the way that I uh, construct my workouts. But um I, I go back and forth with a lot of these things, like with the mace bells or like unconventional tools or, you know, kettlebells or, or ways of like even just using those for uh, if I'm in like a hypertrophy phase, like where does this even fit? Like where are some of these tools like is it possible or is it best suited for, you know, more of my other <clears throat> types of goals for mobility or stability or in that regard? And I like kind of like going through that whole process and two learning something new stimulates what I've already been doing. And and that just keeps things kind of fresh. Uh, but yeah, that's for the most part is just like, you know, trying to find like some concepts out there because there's so many of them uh, to gain benefit from and see where it can apply to, to other types of workouts. Yeah. I think that's tried and true, right? I think that um, humans are drawn to novelty. So the obvious easy answer I think is to switch up the goal. Um, if you've attempted fat loss so many times and you and you're you've been uh, doing that for most of your life, like just changing what you're focused on, I think will be uh, will help out. Uh, also, setting like uh like not only different goals, but then like I'll sometimes just kind of like what Justin's alluding to, which is focus on an exercise, learn a new uh, exercise that takes a lot of skill, like a Turkish get up or even swinging like a mace club, like. That, that's challenging in itself. And so setting a goal like that um, also depends on where I'm at. Like if I'm consistent, but I'm in a rut, like let's say I'm training consistently, but I've just plateaued and I'm, I'm losing motivation to go to the gym. To me, that's the easy transition into like a whole different goal. But if I'm in a rut, like I'm not even going to the gym rut. And I, so, and I haven't motivated myself to get back in the swing of things. Um, my best advice is actually starting like with hardly anything, which that is n- new to even me like that. The front half of my career and training, um, I was very all or nothing where now I've had multiple times since we've done the show where I've kind of fallen off the wagon, where I've fallen off consistency. Even I've strung some weeks together. I mean, I just came off of being sick and, uh, and moving and had probably two weeks where I didn't train. And so after something like that happens, I actually set a very low bar. Like I'm just going to get in and squat today. You know, that's all, that's all I'm going to hold myself to is to get yeah. in and to just a squat or, Hey, I'm just going to go do the elliptical for, you know, 15, 20 minutes and do some ab stuff that I know I need to do. Or I, I've been neglecting mobile. I'll pick just like one or two things that I know I need to do and just do that versus telling myself I need to get like, I need to get re-motivated and I need all this momentum and I need to go get a hard workout in because I know I've been off, I, it won't take much to send a positive si- a signal 
So I'll actually set the bar really low so I know I'll accomplish it. Because what happens a lot of times when I'm in a rut where I've been inconsistent in the gym and I'm trying to re-motivate myself to get back and I'm like, oh, what program of MAP should I follow now? Let me go follow MAP Strong. And then I look at the workout and it's like, oh, do I really feel like doing all that right now? And a lot of times I'll talk myself out of that. So, and in the past, that's how it was for me. It was either that or nothing. Where now, again, I'll just, I'll pick one exercise. I'll just say, hey, I'm going to go in and do circus presses. And many times when I do that, it leads to more exercises, but I'm okay with the possibility that I might just do that one exercise and I might we'll leave the gym and then I'll build on that as, as time goes on. Yeah. We, one of the reasons why we, we've created so many different maps programs, you know, obviously one of the reasons was because there's a lot of different people out there, different goals, but it's also for people who, cause our goal with the podcast, one of our goals is to, to help people develop kind of this lifelong relationship with fitness where, it's something that they always value. They always do because we know the, the the value that it brings to your entire life. And so we have all these different MAPS programs. Part of the reason why we do is so that you could go from one to another to another. Like literally, if you start with one MAPS program and you finish it and you follow the next one and you finish it, we have like, we should have now close to two years worth of workouts kind of laid out for you. And then along those lines, if you feel like you're in a rut, like Adam was saying, MAPS 15 has got to be the best workout answer to that. It's yeah. such a great program specifically for that because you're- Momentum builder. It, you're, you're committing to 15 minutes a day, which if you add up all that time, it's almost two, hour, two one hour workouts. So you, it's actually significant. But because it's every day, it's easy to, to develop the skill of, of discipline and consistency because it's a day, every single day type of thing. And it's not a huge commitment Everybody has, most people can do like 15 minutes at a time. So that's a great, agreed, uh, agreed. that's a great program for, for someone in this uh, particular boat. 